From Hollywood, California, the makers of old gold cigarettes present the Comedy Theater, the only radio program that brings you every week the greatest stars in the greatest comedies. Tonight, the Palm Beach Story, starring Claudette Colbert and Robert Young. Now we have the honor of introducing... Oh, I beg your pardon, Claudette. I thought that was in my script. Oh, that's quite all right, Bob. You've stolen my lines before. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, darling. It's just that my eyes, sometimes in this light... I know. You have double vision. That's right. Mm. I remember that time you tried to play both ends of the love scene and also the dog that was sitting on my lap. Well, now, wait a minute, will you? I... And then be the husband who came in and found us. Listen, I... Uh, ladies and gentlemen... <laughs> Looks like I'll have to introduce myself. I Oh, not... no. Now, you're almost as bad as Bob. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the greatest honor tonight of introducing to you for the first time on the air a man who has rocked the world with laughter, whose name is as familiar in Zanzibar as it is in Danesville, Ohio, the inventor of the horn rim spectacle, the director and host of the Old Gold Comedy Theater. He was born a number of years ago oh, in the no, town... Oh, no, no, no. Excuse me, Claudette. Hmm? Uh, now, I appreciate what you're saying, but... Uh... I'm really not running for the presidency. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Harold Lloyd. Uh, thank you. I'm delighted to be here, and thank you, Claudette. All right. Uh, now then, let's get down to business. Bob, in the uh, Palm Beach story, which we are doing tonight, you play Tom Jeffrey. Claudette plays Jerry Jeffrey. You and Claudette are married. Very broke and uh, having a little argument. Was that unusual? We find you at the beginning of the story browbeating your wife just because a nice old man gave your wife $700. Huh. Did a nice old man ever give your wife $700? Uh, we'll disregard that. Uh, Claudette, as uh, Jerry Jeffers, what did you do with that $700? Now, uh, don't answer if you don't care to. Well, I paid the rent, and I paid the grocer and the insurance, and had my hair done and bought this gold lamé dress, and had $14 left, which I saved for my husband. Isn't that wonderful? That's all very well, Jerry Jeffers, but there's just one little question you haven't answered. What question, Tom? Why? Why this alleged nice old man gave you $700? Oh, no reason. Is that so? No. He just... Seven hundred dollars, just like that. <laughs> That's right. Oh, it was charming. You have no idea how it makes a girl feel to have a man say, "Here's my roll. Peel yourself off something nice." Is that so? <laughs> I uh, suppose sex didn't even enter into it. Oh, of course it did, darling. Hmm? No, I don't think he'd have given it to me if I had hair like Excelsior and little short legs like an alligator. This is very illuminating. Well, you don't have to get so rigid about it. It was all perfectly innocent. Yeah. He was just a very nice, kind, rich, generous old man. Where did you meet him? <laughs> You'll die when I tell you. <laughs> well, go ahead. Kill me. <laughs> In the bathtub. <laughs> In the bathtub? Yes. Isn't that a scream? It's a yell. What were you doing in the bathtub? <laughs> I was hiding from him. Hiding from him? What kind of games do you play around here when I'm out? <laughs> How much water was there in the tub? Well, I was standing in it, you idiot. Standing in it? <laughs> in my pink negligee. What's the matter with you? Well, now, look, he was just a funny little old man the manager wanted to rent our apartment to. And as I wasn't dressed yet, I hid in the bathroom. Then he walked in. Some people have no sense of privacy. What did he do then? Take a bath? No, he was just terribly sorry to hear we were losing our apartment. He said he'd been young and broke, too, a long time ago. And then he gave me $700 and left. And that's all? <laughs> well, I, I did kiss him goodbye. In the bathtub? On the cheek. <laughs> I half expected him to sprout some wings and fly out the window. Yes, it does sound like a fairy tale. So you just tell me where this kind, rich, generous old man lives, and I'll take him back his $700 and thank him... In my own way. I don't know where he lives, darling. I don't know his name or anything about him. And I don't think they'd give the money back. I mean, the grocer and the butcher and the drugstore. And you really couldn't blame them after they'd waited so long. Yeah, that's right. Rub it in. Oh, I didn't mean to. But it's such a wonderful feeling to have all the bills paid and be able to look everybody in the eye. Mm, I like that feeling. 
Why, the fresh start, now that we're all paid up. This is much too expensive for you, Tom, although I know you just wanted it to be nice for me. Where would we move to? Well, I wasn't thinking about me. I, I just meant you. Huh? Look, darling, I'm no good for you. Honestly, I can't cook or sew or whip up a little dress out of last year's window curtains. I'm just a millstone around your neck. Just when did you get this idea? This afternoon? No, I've, I've had it for a long time. Now, don't you see? By yourself, you could live in a little room somewhere or even move in with your brother and pay your bills and maybe even get ahead a little. Oh, who would you be moving in with? Oh, well, that's no problem. You can always find a good provider if you don't care what he looks like. I'm tired of being broke, darling. Oh, Jerry. Oh, no, no, no. Don't talk to me in that tone of voice. If you hadn't done it a long time ago, we wouldn't be in this mess. Jerry. What? Sit on my lap. No, no, no. Well, sit on the arm of the chair, then. Hey, comfortable? No, mm, take your arm away. Well, can't I just hold your hand? Oh, I have a feeling this is all going to end very badly. It's all going to end very well. I've got a man interested in my invention. He's already got $50,000. And if we can just raise the other 49... I know, but you... they never raise the other 49. And, and then they go away, and then you start looking for a new one. But I'm bound to crash through someday. But I don't want it someday. I want it now while I'm young and can still laugh and dance and enjoy myself. Oh, darling, I'm sorry to tell you this, but men don't get smarter as they grow older. They just lose their hair. <laughs> Thanks. No, you don't have to thank me. I'm not being so nice. Don't you see? I could be so much more help to you as a sister. Oh, shut up. Now, as your sister, if anybody wanted to go out with me, I'd naturally... Shut up. You just aren't practical. And to take your arm away. Oh, Jerry. Oh, stop it. Darling, something has to be done. The, the terrible trouble with us is that we're in love. Every time I try to be sensible, you... You put your arm around me and breathe Jerry in my ear and my knees start to turn to water. And Jerry. I... Oh, shut up. Where are you going? Uh, going downstairs to see if they have any cigarettes. Well, I'll go for you. No, no, I'd like to get out of the apartment for a while. It, it smells too much of love. Well, <laughs> what are you taking your coat for? The, the, the lobby's a little drafty. Oh, then why don't you let me go down for you? No, I want to go by myself. Tom, I'm in the phone booth in the lobby. Oh, what's the matter? Didn't they have any cigarettes? I didn't come down for cigarettes. I, I lied to you. Huh? I'm sorry. I'm, uh, darling, I'm going to leave you. I'm going to divorce you. But, Jerry, you can't get a divorce. They cost a lot of money. No, the next husband always pays for that. Oh, you have him all picked out, have you? Suppose I won't give you a divorce. Well, then, then I'll become an adventurous. Oh, will you stop talking like an idiot? I can just see you starting for China in a rowboat. No, you're thinking of an adventurer, dear. An adventuress never goes on anything under 300 feet with a crew of 80. Jerry, for heaven's sake, please. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, <laughs> goodbye, darling. <laughs> And uh, so the curtain falls on... Hey, wait, wait a minute. What? That's not a cue for a sound effect. Uh, sound man, come here, please. Yeah, what do you want? Well, uh, I'm Harold Lloyd. I know your sister, Stella Lloyd. Oh, uh, wait. <laughs> wait, now, never mind the jokes. Let's just get the sound effects right. Look, mister, I only got two hands. You guys don't care how many sound effects you write in. Why, in 20 seconds, I got to open and close eight doors... Break ten panes of glass, wreck two trains, make the sound of six guys walking with rubber heels on gravel, and if that ain't enough, before the story ends, I gotta lay an egg. Well, why be irritated? Uh, write an old gold. So, uh, Jerry Jeffers, you went to Palm Beach. How did you get there? It was really very simple. Any girl could tell you how to do it. You just stand in front of the gate marked Florida Special. You mean any pretty girl. <laughs> well, thanks. Hey, you're welcome. And uh, what do you say? You say you lost your ticket. And that your grandmother's dying of pneumonia, I suppose. To whom do you tell this whopper? I happen to tell it to the Ailen Quail Club, a group of rich millionaires who were going hunting. What were they hunting? Quail. 
Well, I could have guessed that. Well, frankly, yes. Uh, uh, and did they treat you nicely? Well, I got there. Without mishap? Without my clothes. What? Now, look here, young lady. Oh, now, 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 will you stop misunderstanding me? I I just happened to be in the car ahead to get away from Sweet Adeline and a little shooting when the conductor got a little irritated and disconnected the car. Oh, so you were left on the train without any clothes. Yes, all I had was a suit of pajamas. (laughs) Oh, oh, well, (laughs) you had me a little worried there for a moment. And uh, then you met... John D. Hackensack of the third, the richest single young man in the world. What was he doing there? He was traveling in a lower berth. And how did you meet him? I stepped on his face. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Yes, sir. I've often wanted to myself. Well, he turned out to be a very nice young man. He bought me $38,000 worth of clothes in Jacksonville. Oh, he did, did he? Mm-hmm. And by the way, how did you know I'd gone to Palm Beach? Don't get off the subject. $38,000 worth of clothes. I thought those millionaires were very careful. He was. He wrote it all down in a little book. It was quite romantic, as a matter of fact. His yacht was beautiful. Oh, we're on a yacht now, are we? Yes, we yachted the last leg of the voyage. I suppose it was all very proper. Yes, he was a perfect gentleman. Yeah. Anyway, you're on the yacht with John D. Hackensack of the Third, who is no doubt gazing into your eyes. Tom, you have an evil mind. I told you, he was a perfect gentleman. Do you write everything you spend in that little book, Mr. Hackensack? Well, uh, <laughs> It isn't really as bad as it looks. It's just something I learned in childhood. It pleased my grandfather. I write it all down, but I I, I never add it up. Oh. You know yachts are very dull. Yes, I can see what you mean. They are less dull, however, with you aboard. Well, thank you, Jackie. Well, please don't misconstrue what I said. I assure you that I didn't mean anything in any way out of the way. Oh, I trust you, Mr. Hackensack. Your trust is not misplaced, Miss... Uh, Mrs. Uh, Miss Jeffers, Mrs. Geraldine Jeffers. Oh yes, what a beautiful name! Uh, you have left your husband, I take it. That's right. You know, I really don't approve of divorce. Oh well, isn't the Princess Gentamelia your sister? I was afraid you'd bring that up. Hasn't she been divorced five times? No, thrice. She was a null twice. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Did he beat you? Who? The brute you were married to. Oh, oh, not often. A drunkard, I presume. Uh, Not a congenital one or anything like that. Are you going to marry again or give up the whole distasteful idea? Oh, I might weaken again if I found the right man. I see. And what would he be like? Well, just somebody who was reasonably well-to-do so that I could give Tom the $99,000 he needs for his airport. You see, after all, he fed me and clothed me and was very sweet to me. When he wasn't beating you? Huh? Oh, he, he didn't beat me very hard, just normally. And if I could give him a sort of going away present, I'd feel better about the whole thing. I see. I'm not quite sure that you do, but... You're protecting this man again. What? He wishes to sell you for $99,000. What? The man is a vermin of all the filthy things I've ever heard of. He should be incarcerated. No court of law would even... How does he want it? In cash, I think, would be nice. So I won't stop the check. And then... There is a name for such reptiles. Oh, I don't think he'll ever get it. It was just a kind of an no, idea. No, but I'll not sully the sweet ocean breeze by mentioning it. I'm not in the best of shape, but if I ever meet this Mr. $99,000 Jeffers, I'll thrash him within an inch of his life. Well, then I hope you'll never meet him. I suppose he's large. Well, he isn't small. Ah, this is one of the tragedies of this life. The men most in need of beating up are always enormous. <laughs> And uh, so they came to Palm Beach. As they came up to the dock, Jerry noticed someone, a familiar face. She uh, turned to John D. Hackensack of the third. Wait a minute, John. Wait, you wait right there. Tom. Why did you follow me down here for, anyway? Well, you're my wife, aren't you? You're making a fool of yourself, exposing yourself to all sorts of dangers that I promise to love, honor, and protect you from. Oh, look, don't you understand? I've left you. I'm not your wife anymore. You're not my husband. Oh, Jerry, darling. Don't stop it. Now, don't put your arms around oh, me. Honey. Tom, don't kiss me. Well, I must say you do know the best-looking men on the pier. Oh, oh, Princess, uh, the, this is the Princess Chantamelia, my brother, Captain McGlue. What? Uh, Captain, we should have met sooner. And if I'd seen you around, we would have. Uh, this is my brother, Captain Hackensacker. Uh, Captain uh, McGlue. <laughs> That's an odd name. Yes, isn't it? 
How do you do, Captain? I'm not a captain. That's my sister's joke because I own a yacht. <laughs> yeah, well, that's my sister's joke because I don't own one. Well, I'm very glad to meet you. Your sister didn't tell me that she had a brother here. No, I just dropped over and... Uh... And of course you're staying with us. No, no, no. We wouldn't want to inconvenience you. We'll go to a hotel. Inconvenience us? Oh, boy, puppy. We practically run a hotel anyway. This will give the servants some exercise. Your uh, brother's a very fine-looking man. You know, you look exactly alike. <laughs> really? I, uh, I suppose he's married. No, 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 no. He, he's entirely free. Oh, you, uh, you don't tell me. Now, look here. I, I don't look... pay any attention to Maud, Captain. Her bark is worse than her bite. Yes, that's what you think, Soodles. And now, Captain, you take my arm. Hmm? Why did you say you were Captain of? I didn't say a word about it. Oh, how wonderful it is meeting a silent American again. All my husbands were foreigners, and such chatterboxes. I could hardly get a word in edgeways. They certainly must have been. You know, Captain, I have a feeling that I'm going to like you. They make a handsome couple, don't they? Pardon? My sister and your brother. It would be nice if something came of it. Oh, oh, yes, wouldn't it? be wonderful for him. Captain's a big fellow, isn't he? Yes, isn't he? You look exactly alike. <laughs> oh, yes, don't we? You know, people always tell us that. <laughs> I am not grousing. You are too, grousing. I am not. I'm being very reasonable. I merely want to know why the Captain McGlue of all the idiotic names. Because I want him to finance your invention for you. He seems to have something against my husband, but as my brother... I wouldn't allow him to finance a pack of gum for me. I still would like to know why I'm to be called Captain McGlue. But wasn't that your mother's name? What, Captain McGlue? Oh, really, Geraldine, her name was McGrew. Oh, well, I'm sorry, darling. I, I remembered it as McGlue. Well, what am I supposed to be captain of? A garbage scow? <laughs> Couldn't you have been a captain in the last war? Sure, I was 11 years old at the finish. <laughs> What about the Boy Scout? Wonderful. I could go around building bonfires on the drawing room carpet. Oh, I'm, honestly, I'm sorry, darling. I really meant it for the best. Well, I suppose you did. But why did you ever do it in the first place? Because you had your arms around me. I just suppose this Captain Hackensacker, this uh, snoodle, ever put his arms around you? Of course not. Then yachts must have changed since the last time I was on one. That's what they build yachts for. Now, just a minute. What about your friend, the princess, that you're cutting such a groove with? Princess? And how did you get down here? I flew. Well, where'd you get the money? Same place you did. The cute little old man? Yeah, well, he isn't cute. He has a wart on the side of his nose. So he came back. Yeah, he rented oh. the apartment next door and came to see you. He wants us to get together again. Oh. Look, Jerry, don't you think we owe it to him? Just let me go out and poke snoodles in the nose just once. Yes? Excuse me for popping in. Uh, Mac. Did you happen to bring a tuxedo with you? I did not. That's too bad. In a pinch, you can wear one of mine. I won't be here that long. Oh, that's too bad, old man. I wanted to get to know you better. However, I'm very glad that you showed up just when you did. So am I. Good. I needed a male member of Jerry's family. Well, you have him. Fine. Now, I have a certain thought. I have a certain thought also, and it's that bracelet you gave her. Mac. I'm very glad you brought that up. Uh, Mac is delighted with it, Snoodles. He shouldn't be. He isn't. Oh, Fine. Uh... The first bracelet that my sister got, I punched the fellow right in the nose. Well, I can Look. see we understand each other perfectly. Look, if I could trust you boys not to slug each other, I'd like to make an exit right about here. I feel like a bone between two dogs. Oh, we're going to get along all right together. Uh, you see, Mac, Geraldine's future and this little plan I have, which I had better discuss with you before bringing it on her. Well, that's mighty decent of you, Snoodles. You think so, really? <laughs> that would have delighted Grandfather. He always thought me something of an ass. Bright old boy, wasn't he? <laughs> oh, very, very. Look, uh, I think I'll be running along. Good. I have so much to say to your brother. And you have a lot to listen to. And I have so much to say to you at the dance tonight. Darling. Well, toodaloo. Pip, pip. <laughs> Isn't the music divine? I'm dancing on clouds. Oh, you have a nice little voice. Oh, thank you. I used to sing in college. With a mandolin? Uh, yes, but, but I wouldn't play it around the house. <laughs> Would you be around the house much? Not any more than you wanted me. 
I have an office. Not that I do much in it. Say, perhaps Max would come and help me. Oh, that would be wonderful. You two could plan the airport together. What airport is that? Oh, the most remarkable invention you ever heard of. A suspended airport right in the middle of a city. Stretched like a tennis racket. Really? You know, I might be able to help him. In fact, I will help him. Why not? You will? Of course I will. Uh, up to a certain point. How much will a working model cost? Ninety-nine... Uh, I mean... I mean a hundred thousand dollars. I think I'll be able to do it all right. Let's consider the model built. Oh, Snoodles, you're wonderful. You don't like to dance with me, do you? Hmm? Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, certainly. Well, then why do you let me flop around? Oh, I am sorry. <laughs> That's better. What's Jerry's husband like? Who? Oh, just a flop. A big flop? Yes, any way you take it. Well, he won't be such a flop with $99,000. Noodles will give it to him, all right. What's this, about $99,000? That's how much her husband wants. You mean before he'll give her a divorce? Oh, I love you like this, with lightning flashing out of your eyes. Did she tell you that story? Why should we talk about that heel when you're here? Did she tell you that? Mm, the big muscle in your arm contracted and squeezed me deliciously. <laughs> Do it again. Now, listen, I... No, no, you listen to me. I've got so many sweet things to say to you. You know, Geraldine, I, I've never been so happy before in my life. You, you freed me of a certain timidity from which I've always suffered. And now with you and Mac in the airport, I can see great days ahead, full of fun and everything. I'm sure of it, Noodles. Uh, uh, by the way, I have a little surprise for you later tonight, so... Uh, don't be surprised. Well, what is it? Well, if I told you what it is, then you wouldn't be surprised anymore. <laughs> well, I wouldn't do anything too surprising if I were you, Snoodles. You never can tell how those things are going to turn out. I'm persuaded you'll be delighted. Well, I certainly hope I will be. Yes, if, if you'll just leave your window open onto the balcony. Why, Snoodles! Oh, oh no, it's not what you think, really. When, when I climb, I get dizzy. <laughs> So, you're a fast worker, aren't you? You've got a lot of nerve to talk. So you couldn't even wait a decent interval, you and your princess. I hope you're very proud of yourself, Captain McGlue. Oh, now, wait a minute. No, let go of me, you big pullover. I'm the one that has the right to... I know I'm an idiot, but I, I suppose it's when you've been fond of somebody for a long time. You, you shouldn't have come down here. You should have given me a little time to get used to the idea. Well, maybe I should. But you can't blame a man for trying to hold on to something that he loves. But he always has loved. And always will love. Oh, you're going to make me cry. Jerry. No, no, you're forgetting the airport. You're forgetting everything that counts. Jerry. Now listen to me just this once, will you? I've always done what you wanted. It's always turned out to be a disaster. Mm -hmm. Oh, good night, darling. Sleep tight. Your, your room is right through that door. Well, it seems funny sleeping with a sitting room between us. And the door's locked. Yeah, you don't have to worry about that. Well, nevertheless. Good night, dear. Well, what are you waiting for? Well, don't you kiss your brother good night? I don't know. I never had a brother. Well, you have one now. Oh, don't be silly. What in the world is that? Well, that must... Oh, it's that little surprise. Why, well, he's got a whole orchestra down there. Oh, he shouldn't do things like that on a night like this. Oh, Jerry. <laughs> Don't start that again. You really want it that way? Please, Tom, it has to be that way. There's no other way possible. Okay, I guess you know best. Good night, dear. I'm, I'm ready to get undressed. Yes, of course. I'm just a brother. We're big children now. Yes, dear. Good night. Okay, Jerry. Good night. Oh, Tom. Uh... Huh? In just a minute, I I can't get this zipper in the back of my dress. Would oh. you mind before you go? Glad to. They're not making zippers like they used to. Nothing's like it used to be. Well, you'll have to come over here to the light. Yeah, is that all right? A little too high. Better sit on my lap. Well, now, I don't think... Oh, it's all right, sister. There, now. Now can you get it? Mm -hmm. So it doesn't mean anything when I kiss the back of your neck like this. <gasps> No, nothing. When I squeeze you, like this. Mm, you know I'm ticklish. Or when I turn you around and kiss you, like this. 
Oh, Tom. Tom, this is costing us $99,000. Do you love me? It's costing us the airport and all your chances. Do you love me? Oh, it's useless and impractical and wonderful. Do you love me? Yes, darling. I, I love you. I love you. I love you. That's all I wanted to know. Claudette, Bob, that was wonderful. It's a great story. But, uh, look, you haven't uh, told the audience what happened to John D. Hackensack of the third. Oh, he married my twin sister. And uh, the princess. She married my twin brother. Mm -hmm. Well, that sounds simple, I, I think. But, uh, look, with all these twins running around, are you sure that you were married to the right partner? Well, of course we're sure. Or are we? Huh? Uh, now, next week's show... Uh, what, uh, something wrong, Carl? Something? Everything's gone wrong today. My first violinist has broken his second string for the third time. Three of my, my musicians are wearing brown shoes with their tuxedos. Two of my musicians aren't wearing any shoes at all. My tuba player has the hiccups, and everything he plays sounds like a march. Why be irritated? Light an old gold. <laughs> yes, that's right. Light an old gold and enjoy a better-tasting cigarette sprayed with apple honey to help guard against cigarette dryness. You know, a really flavorful smoke is swell when you get it at the peak of smoking perfection. Not dry and harsh. That's why Old Gold's grand-tasting blend of many-choice tobaccos seasoned with costly, flavorful Latakia leaf is sprayed with apple honey. This helps hold in the natural moisture and guards against cigarette dryness. So why be irritated? Light an old gold. And when you ask for old golds at your cigarette counter, remember this. They've not only tripled in popularity, billions of them are going to the men and women overseas. So if your dealer says, sorry, we're out of old gold, don't be irritated. Just keep on asking till he says, old gold, sure, we've got some today. Yes, we're sincerely sorry there aren't enough old golds to go around. But please be patient. And we'll keep on doing our very best to get them to you. This is uh, Harold Lloyd saying thank you and good night. See you next week. The Palm Beach story was presented by arrangement with Paramount Pictures, producers of Our Hearts Were Young and Gay. Robert Young is currently appearing in Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer's Canterville Ghost. Claudette Colbert can be currently seen in David O. Selznick's Since You Went Away. And now this is Bob Williams saying good night until next week's comedy theater when we present Ball of Fire, starring Gary Cooper and Lucille Ball. And in the meantime, why be irritated? Light an old gold. Enjoy a better-tasting cigarette sprayed with apple honey to help guard against cigarette dryness. And listen to Old Gold's other great new show, Which is Which, with Ken Murray as MC, Richard Himber's orchestra, and famous stars of stage, screen, and radio, or their reasonable facsimiles. Tune in Wednesday night on another network. Consult your newspaper for time and station. This is the National Broadcasting Company.